Now, to get us started, it's my honor to welcome the Vice Chancellor of Research for at UC Berkeley, Kathy Yellick. Thank you very much, Camille, uh, for that introduction. And I want to welcome you all virtually to uh, Berkeley, a world-class um, research institution and the top public uh, university in the world. And we have at Berkeley 10 Nobel laureates and hundreds of National Academy members. It also has the highest number of top-ranked graduate programs and over a billion dollars of annual research funding as of last year. Um, it's also an incredible engine for social mobility, and it, it moves more students from the bottom 20% of the economic back bracket to the top 1% than any other university. I want to say a little bit about the importance of diversity in research, um, both from my personal experience as well as um, as a just a member of the University of California, which has a very strong commitment to all forms of diversity in education, in research, and in the staff that work at the university. California is an incredibly diverse state, and we want the university to reflect that at all of its different levels and programs. And all forms of diversity are important, including gender, racial, and ethnic diversity, the socioeconomic diversity, and all other aspects that make us a better community for everyone that's involved in that, in that community. So let me say a little bit about diversity in research. Um, we, I would you know, start with the fact that research is really about creativity and it's about creating new ideas and starting with those, those new ideas. And we, we need the diversity in research in order to have a diverse set of, of these ideas and to make sure that we're designing things and building things that are going to be, to be beneficial to the uh, society as a whole. So things like engineering devices, um, and automatic faucets that are designed to only work on light skin or airbags that are only tested on people over a certain height or AI algorithms that sort of bake in uh, the historical bias in the data. These are all things that we need to recognize and combat as we're doing our research. But I think it's also diversity in the research workforce also goes beyond those kind of specific examples of what we're designing to all of the discoveries that we won't have um, if we don't have a diverse workforce in research. People from different backgrounds, people with different experiences will bring new discoveries and different kinds of discoveries to our communities. And last, I think that it's not just about having a diverse set of people um, in, the, in the workforce, it's making sure that they feel confident and they feel a sense of belonging so that they can contribute as equal members, that they can uh, have the, the, the confidence to be able to share ideas and uh, even bad ideas as well as good ideas so that um, there can be a free exchange of those ideas and we can learn from their perspectives. There is a huge opportunity for research to address pressing changes, pressing global challenges like climate change. And I, I think that there, it's important to think about how these problems, these research problems that have direct social impact have a diverse representation and broader perspectives to improve the solutions that we're developing. Now, I also um, am very honored to be able to present uh, the Department of Energy. I've had a long-standing connection with at UC Berkeley for over 30 years, but also with Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and with other, the other Department of Energy laboratories. And the laboratories bring together a unique set of user facilities, telescopes, microscopes, light sources, supercomputers, sequencers, and also the idea of team science and bringing together a diverse set of people with per perspectives from different disciplines um, in order to solve really enormous problems. My own research has been in high performance computing and I'm a computer scientist and you might think that that doesn't have much to do with climate change. But over the last decade, I've really been working on understanding uh, the microbiome and using uh, supercomputing to help understand what are the species in the microbiome, what causes them to uh, either uh, to store more carbon, for example, to, and, or to release it in different kinds of communities, whether it's in the ocean and soil and so on. 